Hi, it's Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm. Today I'm going to show you how to join little flowers you make on a daisy loom. There's two different ways that I learned. Neither one of them require crochet. There are a number of ways to join the daisy loom flowers, flower loom, whatever you want to call it, using crochet, but I am not going to show you those techniques. I'm going to show you a very simple technique that works better if you have all one color and then another one that's a little bit more complicated. Let's look at the first one that's really easy first. Now this is the one I learned when I was a little kid. And the reason why it is so simple is why I probably learned it when I was a kid. This works best, I think, if you're using like all the same color um, of background. If you have dual color or tri triple color um, flowers. If the background, or the larger petals are all the same color, I think this procedure works best just because of the way it shows when you're done with it. I have used two different color backgrounds here so you can see what I'm talking about. All you're doing is joining the flowers in a, well, when they're done, It would be like a seven pattern sort of block, so to speak. And you just, you're going to go around and you're going to join the flowers. Just literally, you're going to be making a stitch on the petals to join the petals. So let me show you. So you can see how I've joined these two with a blue thread and you can see it. If that doesn't bother you, that's no big deal. And here is joining a blue on white with a blue thread. Now, if we take another blue one, and it's as simple as gathering the petals that you want. And I always, um, you can't make a knot, obviously, like regular sewing, so I just tie it off. And then trim that up to the knot. And then you take, go up through the petals of the other one. And you're just going to loop around through the two petal groupings. And then I sew this way as well, just to make it a little bit stronger. So I joined that one. Let me get, when you're forming your blocks of flowers, if you're making an afghan or a large project, such as a pillow covering or a pillow, plan for the blocks. I'm just going to tie this one together here. Just like you would a planning like a quilt block project, only your quote unquote blocks are going to be groupings of flowers. And you don't have to do seven. I mean, you could do whatever you want. You could do groupings of four if you wanted to. Whatever, you know, your project, whatever you planning your project, you think it would work better. Look at, so that's what, you know, if you were joining, you could join it all the way around and you can see that I'm just joining the, if you'd use the, all the same color, you're not going to notice it hardly at all. If you're joining, you know, two different colors, you will notice it. So I think the project doing th this way works best if you're dealing with all the same colors or if it just doesn't bother you. So that would be your finished block. You would join all the way around. You'd join these to here and you would join the sides until you had a block. So that would be a seven flower block. So let's look at the other way. The other way 
is more is a lot more complicated. Still doesn't involve any kind of crochet though. Basically what you're doing on these is a blanket stitch. It's an embroidery stitch. And if you don't know how to do that, guess what? I have a video on how to do the blankets. And I use this, the blanket stitch is used also in uh, Amish rag rug that I show you, that I also have a video. It's just like you're using rags to do it with instead of embroidery floss or yarn. First of all, you want to gather the petal grouping. You have, you know, each petal. And you're going to form a loop. So, you want to make a loop about, it's probably a little big. And then you're going to go around, so you, you want to secure your yarn. If I say thread, it's just, I use, <laughs> it's just interchangeable. Now, you've got this loop, and what you're going to do, the loop is the base of what we're going to be putting the blanket stitch on. And if you ever, as a kid, if you ever used yarn to make, like, cover wire coat hangers, it was really big in the 70s and 60s. It was a kid project. This is the same, same exact stitch you're doing that you did with your yarn, only you're just doing it over this little loop. And you're just pulling it, like, tight as you go around the loop here. Let me show you. So you have your yarn, you go under, and you're going to be pulling it in through the, the circle. So you have like a loop here. I always put my finger in there. Keeps it from totally disappearing. And then you're pulling it out through that loop. And it's going to make the stitch. And you're going to do that the whole length of your Oops. A link of your little loop that you made. Sorry, if you ever hear my uh, alarm going off in the background, it's my homeschooler. It's for her to change classes. She's in junior high, so we do, uh, we pretty much have the same schedule as a regular junior high would. We have different classes. She changes to the next class when that goes off. All right, when I get to the end of my loop here, I have a couple more stitches actually. You're going to join the two loops just by do, putting, grabbing a little one of the stitches on the fault on the one next to it, and doing another blanket stitch. That's all you're going to be using is blanket stitches. Now, how do we get back to here so we can do our next loop? You want to pick up these little tiny stitches that we've got here that we just did, and you're going to go in each one of those. And you're going to do another row of blanket stitches. And I'm really wishing I had my glasses right now. <laughs> so I'm just picking up. Oops. For each one of those stitches. So I'm making like two rows of blanket stitches is what I'm doing. And that will take me back to the side that I want to start my next loop on. Let me get over here and then I'll show you. And it's pretty easy to see where the loops are because it leaves a little indention. It's like a little, you could see here, like if I wanted to do another layer I would just go in these dots here. So let me get these done really quick here. The blanket stitch is one of the most versatile stitches and can be used in Anything from applique projects to obviously making faux crochet, embroidery, rugs, just uh, very useful. Okay, and then I've finished that loop. So I would go over to here to make my next loop. And then I would do it all over again. 
So you see you start getting this petal effect all the way around it. All right, so you have to do that for every flower. Now, let me show you how you join them. This one isn't finished, obviously, but for the sake of the video here, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I would join that. It isn't going to affect this because I don't have anything to hook down there anyway. Whenever you finish joining one, it's good if you could leave a pretty good length of yarn there for when you come back, you can just pick up. Now, again, this is going to work. This is going to look more unified if you use all the same colors. So if I was using all cream or all purple, but I was just trying to do some sample ones. I've done a bunch of these. I had one time I was going to do a big afghan um, and I just didn't and then I used some of them to make a pillow and I used some to make some kind of wall art that had like on the on a burlap. So I've, I, I keep, you know, it's fun to do things once in a while. Um, I have little projects I take with me in the car and stuff because you know our, our house is a few hours away, the homestead. So it, at doctor's appointments, I can't just sit. I go nuts if I'm just sitting. So I always have some little gallon baggie with some little project. And you never know when you want to have these for some kind of craft project. So I keep a little, you know, I just make little things here and there. And I always use them. You know, sometimes it's years later, but I'll be like, oh, I have that whole bag. I can do that project. And it saves me time. So I'm always diddling around like that. So um, if I, you know, if I don't have a, sometimes I have projects that I'm working on that are more complex than I want to take out of the house. Like if I have an embroidery project, I just don't want to, it's like a bigger one on a big twist, you know, like the big double frame or something, or my frame is a big hoop and it's on a stand by my chair. I don't want to take that out of the house. I have what I call my traveling bag. Project changes a lot depending on, you know, how much waiting I've done and where I've gone and, you know, when it's done, then I just throw in another kind of project. If I don't have anything in particular I'm wanting to work on, then I do something like this kind of thing. I throw in a loom and throw in some yarn and whatever necessary implements I need to do that project. And I chunk it in my purse and it's there. How do you join this kind? It's the same principle as the block that we were forming with this one. If you had, you would have, you know, all of these would have the loops around them. So you're going to get more of a lacy effect with this one because you're, you're not joining flower to flower. You're joining row to row. So you, again, you you would have a bigger block, but I like to stick with this seven flower formation. Me, it just, I, I, since I'm a quilter, I'm used to, you know, having blocks. So that's the way I think. And, and you would just make, I would, what I would probably do is make a whole bunch of these flowers. And then the next step of the project would be, I'd go do the little loops, the flower petals around all those flowers. And then when I got a sufficient quantity of those, I'd probably go make a few blocks to make myself feel like I was progressing with my project before I continued on making more or whatever. So this is going to be the same idea or concept that we were using to go around each flower. It's going to be how we're going to join it. I'm going to take, this one would become the center one here since we don't have a center one yet. I always usually like to work from the center out. So you're just going to take, you're going to do the same thing. We're going to be joining it with blanket stitch to start with. You're going to make one loop so it's hooked together. Now you could, if you wanted to, go back and forth and just sew. But I think doing the blanket stitch makes it look finished. And you're just going to go through. This time you're going to have to go through the holes of the blanket stitch on each of the little lacy parts that we've done around the petals here. So you can start seeing sort of like the blanket stitch goes this way and this way. It almost starts getting like a 3D effect. Here's what it looks like in the back. So then I would come I want to just loop this off so you secure my yarn here. Let 
And then I would come over here and do the same thing with, you know, purple yarn though. Using the blanket stitch to make the loop around each of the petal groupings and then you're going over it, the blanket stitch over the loop. You make the loop, blanket stitch, go back through the blanket stitch for a second row. You can see the second row here. And then to join the flowers, you're doing the same thing. You're just blanket stitching one set, one flower to the other flower all the way around until you have, again, what would be your block. I learned, um, like I said, one is much more involved because you have to do all the little stitching around it. The other one is simpler and faster and all you're doing is joining flowers. But again, I think that works best if you're using all the same color flowers or it doesn't bother you that your yarn is different. I always also would think this was probably would look better too with all the same. So like if I did the lavender and then join it with the last, it's going to be less noticeable that you've joined it. It's going to look like it possibly was crocheted all in one piece. It does give the illusion that this is a crocheted afghan. If you don't know how to make the flowers on the daisy loom or the flower loom, whatever you want to call it, I have a video on how to do that too. So, uh, this is me, Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm. Bye.